So this video right here marks the end of the 30 Days of Taker video series. I promise you guys 30 videos over 30 days about the career and legacy of The Undertaker. And I can't believe I'm saying this, I actually delivered on it. So thank you to all of you that have actually bothered to check out some or all of the videos of this series. Those of you that might just be catching this one because it's a Q&A video and you might have asked some questions. You know, now's a great time to go back and watch the other videos in this series. But we made it to the finish line. Let's just get through this last video, shall we? And today it's going to focus on Old Man Taker, if you will. That time for the last few years of Taker's career, from the streak ending at WrestleMania 30 until Survivor Series 2020 and the final farewell. Let's go ahead and get started. EJ Dennis 96 is going to kick us off by asking, uh, what if they had Shane McMahon beat Undertaker at WrestleMania 32? I think it was one of those things that, you know, what difference would it have made? Maybe your thought would have been that Shane McMahon, well, chances are be around longer with the company than Taker as an on-screen character, so maybe that would work. I mean, the streak was already over at that point, and so this is always a challenge for me with Taker is once the streak was over... Like, he really ceased to serve a purpose anymore. Because if he loses another match at Mania, it's not the same. If he wins a match at Mania, then that's kind of dumb. Then why did you ever end the streak? Uh, Dalek of Chaos asks, Let's say Undertaker did not lose to Lesnar and Bray Wyatt did not lose to Cena. Do you think Bray Wyatt would have been a better person to end the streak? Uh, yes, because he would still be around. But the, the problem with this is is if you're going to have somebody end Taker's streak, like not only does it need to be their career-defining moment or their launching path for their career, but they need to be a clearly established top guy for a long, long time, which is why somebody would always default maybe to somebody like Roman Reigns being the one to do it. Now, to me, that absolutely makes sense. I don't know if the Bray Wyatt or even Fiend character is something that is going to be sustainable for a decade plus where you're going to have that person consistently in a main event type of spot. You might have said, well... Then you would have Bray Wyatt fill a taker type of role, which you certainly have a need for that type of role. But um, that said, I would have rather have Bray Wyatt end it than I would have Brock Lesnar. B.W. Rosas asked, do you think it would have been it would have better suited for Taker and Sting, Sting to team together at 31 against Triple H and Bray Wyatt instead of the two singles matches? Or do you think a team up at SummerSlam or Survivor Series would have been better suited for them? Like, that would have been pretty cool. To have Sting and Taker on a tag team, maybe at a SummerSlam. But if you if you did that, like if you associated them on screen together, then inevitably everybody's going to be so focused on, well, if they're on screen together and they're working a match together, why not have a work a match against each other? So if you weren't going to go there, then you probably need to stay away from it. That said, it probably would have been pretty cool to see for sure. Uh, Horror Movie Review 73 asks, what do you think was Taker's last good match before retiring? Um, the Boneyard match at WrestleMania 36 was really good. That was a lot of fun. That was a cinematic match done right. I really, really enjoyed that match. Uh, and which Taker match do you think was worse? Taker versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 33 or Taker versus Goldberg at Super Showdown? Well, since I don't watch those Saudi shows, I don't watch those Super Showdown shows, I have heard everybody say how bad it was, Taker talk about how bad it was, etc. But I saw Taker and Roman Reigns at 33, and that was god-awful. That was god-awful. So that has to be the worst. Not to mention, beyond all of that, it's way more people watch it. And it was the main event of WrestleMania. That has to be the worst of those two, easily. Joseph Moran. If Taker had had his last match at Survivor Series, would he have had him face Kane or The Fiend? Uh, obviously, there's so many things that you could say come full circle with him wrestling Kane one more time. But to me, it's got to be The Fiend because it still would have tied into the Bray Wyatt trying to get revenge on people that did him wrong in the past. Well, here's Taker who beat him at WrestleMania. So, yeah, would have been cool. Like A perfect way to send him off as a final farewell would have been to have The Fiend lock in the mandible claw on Taker and choke him out. I had him been given back in a big way and really put somebody on the map. You could have maybe even done that at Survivor Series. This year, where it wasn't a match, where the final farewell was The Fiend comes in and just puts him out. 
Sure, that would have been a lot of people like, oh, that's going to be the match at WrestleMania, and then you never do it. It would be kind of disappointing, but, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, Christian Mingle, favorite taker match in the last three years? Um, I probably will go with the Boneyard match at 36. Canadian C273, do you get a morbid sense of humor out of the Saudi Undertaker matches between Goldberg and that tag match with DX? Uh, not really, because I didn't watch those matches. You know, sometimes when you do the money grabs, you get what you pay for, you get what you deserve. Um, do I think it's funny in some ways, maybe? But again, I didn't watch those matches. I didn't watch those shows. So I really don't have a ton of thoughts on that. Uh, Keys 10 asks, if the streak remains in, remained intact, would his retirement be an even bigger deal? Yes, probably to a little bit of an extent. Especially if the retirement would have happened at a WrestleMania. Um, well, you know what? Maybe not. Because it's still Taker, man. It's still Taker. So that probably means every bit as much. It would have meant much more if you'd actually have been able to do the retirement in front of a live audience. Like in front of a stadium full of fans. Not just an arena, but a stadium full of fans. It's a big four pay-per-view. Like you could have done it somewhere down in like Dallas, Texas. You could have put... 80, 90,000 people into that arena, especially if you're hyping it up as Taker's final farewell. Like, that that would have been the end. Like, nothing could have followed that. Um, Power Spy in one. Which Taker match from WrestleMania 30 to now would you erase from history? Uh, <laughs> Brock Lesnar, WrestleMania 30. That's the answer to me. As that was still one of the stupidest decisions ever. It's not just they ended the streak, but they ended the streak for a part-timer who didn't freaking need it. If you're going to end the streak, give it to somebody that's really going to need it. There just wasn't a payoff there to have Brock end it. It just pissed everybody off. That's the match. If I could, if there's one match that I could wipe from history between WrestleMania 30 to now for Taker, that's the one right there. Kieran Chase. Uh, do you think WWE missed the boat with Cena versus Taker? They had a chance at both WrestleMania 33 and 34, but never fully went through with it. I mean, we technically got Taker versus Cena at WrestleMania. And personally, I enjoyed the squash match. That's me. I enjoyed that. But I can say this, Karen. I know you're a raging Cena, Mark. You know, we're not all perfect. Uh, but they certainly missed the mark by never having Cena versus The Undertaker at WrestleMania, when Taker was still relatively a regular guy, and Cena was a regular guy, and he was at the top of the heap. Like, you can imagine the legitimate fear and trepidation of fans, and the debates that would have been sparked all over the internet, social media, Reddit, you know, wrestling, dirt sheets, and etc., about whether Cena is going to be the one to end the streak. Like, there would have been a morbid sense of fear there, and I would have shared that morbid sense of fear. Like, you want to talk about a match that would have people emotionally invested, a match that you clearly have to find who the face and the heel is, that's it right there. And they probably didn't do it because, A, Taker didn't want to work with Cena at Mania for that, and I get that. B, because WWE would have been afraid of, hey, we can't send out the guy, we can't, we can't pipe in enough positive-sounding sounds to drown out the hatred and booze that Cena would get for facing Taker at Mania. Uh, but do I think they missed the boat? Yes. Like, to me, WrestleMania 28, if you didn't have Cena versus The Rock, even perhaps the bigger match would have been Cena versus Taker main event. Streaks on the line. He's 19-0. and 0, He's facing off against Super Cena. Like, that would have been a big effing deal. Big effing deal. Like, personally, I do think they missed the boat. I am with you all the way. Mid Carter J, if you had to replace AJ Styles as Taker's last opponent, who would you choose? Um, I mean, for that show, if you were talking about doing a funhouse match, then maybe it would have been The Fiend, but eh. I don't know. I, I don't want to switch that last opponent. I think the last opponent was perfectly fine. I think that match was great. So I have no need or desire to want to change it. That's just me. Kyle Garner, 92. When Sting came into WWE in 2014, do you think him and Taker should have finally had their program and match at 31, or do you think the time for that had already passed? 
I think there's a twofold answer to that. To the second part of your question, had the time already passed? Yes. That time was more around WrestleMania 27 when the people were really hot for it. Uh, that said, should they have still had a match at WrestleMania 31? Yes, they probably should have. Because at that point in time, the streak's already over. Now you're looking for what's the appeal here for Taker to have a Mania match? Let's do a dream match. Let's have him and Sting. Um, I'd much rather have Sting potentially lose to Taker at Mania than I would have Triple H, especially with how they did that match. Um, so, yeah, but, well, I think the time for it had already passed by a few years. You also still could have gotten there and probably should have gotten there. Uh, Byron Andreas closes us out by asking, if The Undertaker wants to do three more WrestleMania matches or Saudi Arabia house shows, what three opponents should he choose? F. U. Byron. He doesn't need three more matches. He needs one. He needs to retire. Stay away. Let it go. No. Why would you ask that, Byron? If he wants to do three more WrestleMania matches, how many more do you need? Would you want him to get to 30 WrestleMania matches? A nice, even, cool number? I'm good with that. Let it go. We got the final farewell at Survivor Series. Let's let that actually be our hashtag farewell taker moment. Can we please? Farewell taker. No, I don't even want to entertain that. <laughs> Three more matches. No! No, 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 no. It's time to move on for everybody involved. And that brings us to the end of this old man taker Q&A. Brings us to the end of this 30 days of taker video series. Uh, I certainly have enjoyed this trip down Nostalgia and Lane and Memory Boulevard over this past month, looking back at the past 30 years of the life, career, and legacy of Mark Calloway, a.k.a. The Undertaker. I hope you guys have enjoyed it as well. Uh, if you have, if you haven't um, done so, make sure you check out the other videos in this series. There's 30 of them. I know it takes a little bit to get through those, but... Probably worth your time. This is the first time you checked out a video as part of the series. Smash that subscribe button. Click the bell. What the hell? So that way you're notified of future videos. But I'm at the end of it. It's a sad chapter, man. To think about the fact that it could truly, legitimately, actually be all over for The Undertaker. Hmm. Knew this day would come someday. Just didn't know when it would happen. And maybe this 30 days of Taker video series is as much as anything else therapeutic for me because it helps me flush all of it out of my system. It gets it all gone. And now I feel at peace with it. I really do. And I hope in some ways maybe this video series has helped represent that for you as well. <sighs>